Hi. Hi everyone. Thanks for joining in. I'm just waiting for our guest to join in as well. Hi everyone this is just uh, an insta live that i'm really excited about we launched our campaign uh, choices jaane today and we are going to be talking more about our campaign and about the topic of uh, informed choice when it comes to using uh, sustainable menstruation products so what we have found is that uh, sometimes there tends to be a lot of um, a uh, little bit of shaming uh, around uh, sustainable menstrual products about uh, you know menstrual cups being the best thing ever and things like that so today we are going to talk about informed choice about how uh, what period product you use is essentially your choice and we need to take the shame out of that so we have uh, rajasi who's joining us today she's sending her a request and i'm adding her on Hi Rajshri. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I wasn't very well, but now I'm better. <laughs> yeah, I'm really sorry we had to do this. <laughs> no, that's okay. That's okay. Okay. So where are you based right now? I I am currently in Mumbai, and um, I'm from Maharashtra, but yeah. um, my work. Uh, like um, since my like career started in chatisgarh so i keep on going to chatisgarh and um, mm -hmm. yeah so like back and forth things happen yeah, yeah that's right so uh, rajasi is actually a menstrual health educator she's been an educator for the past 7 years and we're really excited to have her here today she's the founder of the campaign uh, bleed red go green and she's also the founding member of a few other uh, campaigns on sustainable menstruation and menstrual health education and uh, we are looking forward to hearing from her and about her work and experience in chatisgarh and at other places so thank you so much for doing the live on uh, such short notice and in these uh, circumstances yeah yeah uh but we're really excited because we are just starting a campaign called uh, choices jaane which is essentially uh, going to be about it's going to be a community driven digital campaign uh, asking for uh, complete education about different menstrual products to be included in school curriculums so that's the objective of the campaign choices jaane that all the different uh, menstrual products that we have in the market today all of them should be introduced to school students right uh, at the young age when they get to know about menstruation itself and secondly right, right. Uh, yeah at the crux of the campaign we also have a uh, informed choice as well as a uh, personal choice uh, that we want to take uh, shaming out of uh, sustainable menstruation it's everyone's individual decision when they want to make the switch to a greener period and how they want to do it uh, yeah so that's that's what we want to talk about uh, today and we're really excited about taking this forward yes yes So, so yeah let's uh, start <laughs> yeah let's start a little bit uh, about maybe your experience about how you uh, got uh, into sustainable menstruation and then how did you uh, start uh, including this in your work in, as a menstrual health educator uh so for me my journey started in chatisgarh itself like 7 uh, years ago i moved to chatisgarh and i was there for four, almost 4 four years and um, so like 3 uh, years ago i moved back to uh, maharashtra uh, so there i faced this issue that uh, there was silence about this topic or uh, one thing uh, there was 
hardly any awareness about this topic, uh, let alone the informed choices and so many other things. So uh, that was one thing. And another thing was like, um, at that time, I was using a disposable product. Mm -hmm. uh, I have been a cloth user, but then I was using a disposable product. And after moving there, I realized that there is, there is no way, like there is no place where you can hide your disposable products. Like uh, someone can maybe, um, like in a uh, city, someone carries your uh, waste. Uh, someone picks your garbage. But in uh, rural areas, there is no one picking your garbage. No one. It's in your backyard. It's either in your farm. It's someone is going to see it and it's going to be there. Like you literally see it. And that's what we saw it. And um, and um, I, when I moved there, there was uh, monsoons going on. So it made it more worse to dispose it of. So <laughs> all these issues, uh, you, you know, uh, when I thought of all this, and I was living with uh, uh, girls, actually. It was a residential school where I worked. So all this combined, I came to know that, you know, this topic needs to be addressed. So that's how I came into, uh, like, I changed myself like I changed my own habits and then I introduced all these topics to the um, people I was working with right so uh, how did you uh, how did your career as a menstrual educator begin was that in Chhattisgarh as well uh, I would say that um, I was always um, an educator but uh, like I used to work with schools or anganwadis that's what I have done um, Till many years ago, uh, till 2018, I was working with Anganwadis. Like I was involved in nutrition and education, such aspects. Uh, but in 2017 itself, I understood that this topic needs to be addressed. So while continuing the whatever job I was doing, I used to add this segment to uh, wherever I've worked. And I used to make sure that this topic gets addressed uh, with the organization I'm working with or the community I'm working with. So um, that's how the journey has been for me. Okay. And uh, please tell us about your uh, organization, uh, Bleed Red, Go Green, and about the other initiatives that you have started as well. Uh, so Bleed Red, Go Green is actually, um, uh, you know, it started as a concept in, uh, uh, in 2016, actually. Uh, that was the first time I did like a public event about sustainable menstruation or menstruation at all uh, in Chhattisgarh. So uh, I had got a stall at a TEDx event where uh, actually others were all entrepreneurs and I was the only one who was there just to create awareness about uh, what this topic is about. And that's how, uh, so to name our stall, there was literally no, no name in our mind and we used Bleed Red Go Green as a really catchy tagline. And then uh, like last year, I finally thought of like um, uh, launching it as, a, as an initiative so um, actually, we uh, we are still in the process process of registration, but um, I would say Bleed Red Go Green is like an umbrella under which we are running different campaigns, and uh, the current campaign which you are uh, seeing on Bleed Red Go Green's pages, uh, periods three sixty degree, which is quite similar to what you are pitching uh, around uh, like uh, um, under your campaign. Okay. So uh, let's let's start a little bit with uh, informed choice. So with this, basically, what we're trying to talk about is that uh, there's a need that all of us need to know about sustainable menstruation products, sustainable uh, menstruation products like uh, cloth pads and. Uh, menstrual cups are not part of the mainstream when we talk about period products whenever uh, the mainstream still consists of just disposable products so there is a need uh, for us like if i talk about myself i probably learned about menstrual cups when i was uh, 25 years of age uh, despite of me living in the capital city of india and you know having complete access to the internet and uh, me personally being interested in gender issues and uh, sustainability still it took me such a long time to uh, get to know about it and then I took my own uh, time uh, to actually purchase these products and then to start using them so I probably started using right. them when I was 27 so it took me two years to think about it to get my mind around it because I didn't know anyone personally who was using these products you know in city life 
uh, whether it was uh, menstrual cups which are considered to be so revolutionary or like so advanced or i don't know futuristic or something just for western women or you know cloth pads which are considered to be like you're going 50 years back in time or something like that so but then in right. the past two years i've used both these products and i have had a really comfortable experience and uh, but keeping my experience aside uh, i want to ask you about the importance of you know in, informed choice uh, with respect to menstrual products especially with respect to young girls you know the girls that you work with in schools who are just starting with their uh, period uh how important do you think is informed choice there uh it's very much needed because um uh, mainstream media and um, even a lot of teachers or or i would say like even the peers they know only about disposable pads uh, some of them do know about cloth but uh, because their mothers have probably used it or um, or when they got their first period uh, their mother must have given them a cloth and maybe then later they started using disposable products so uh, it depends but um, like uh, disposable pad is like shown like the only product uh, that's one thing uh, especially when it comes to the school girls um, and um, and in rural urban it's quite similar actually so disposable is shown like the ultimate pad and ultimate product uh, because uh, some ngos are working or someone has probably donated them so things like that um why informed choices is needed is because uh, like i was really shocked like i was i think 22 when i moved there so then i realized that um, i didn't know about reusable options and uh, i did knew about cloth but i was shamed as a child and same shaming i have seen it um, in the girls where i worked with like uh, like cloth to ganda hota hai like it's not good for you get infections from it uh, part truth part myth also so um, so we need to work on that and we really need to like do a comparison of what are the products are available and then we should choose from it like what finds me comfortable so i know a couple of girls who have used cloth before but they were shamed for using it and then they moved to disposable pad which they didn't like it um, then uh, like what they used to do is like i know these girls or even women also i know like when they are outside uh, they are very ashamed that they are using cloth or or perhaps they don't know that you know they can use a pouch to keep their used cloth or something so they just use a disposable pad which they which can be thrown away and uh, at home whenever they are home they will prefer a cloth or a or a hand stitch cloth pad so uh, these are the preferences uh, we have seen and uh, we really need to respect these choices and i think there should be a um, like when we as educators go in the field or or persons who want to work on this topic we really should uh, talk about all the products available like tampons i know those girls will never use it but i still need to show them what a tampon is where it is worn and uh, you know when you show these options like even though they don't use a cup it just opens the conversation about three different openings down there lots of people don't know that their pee hole and their vagina are different they think that they bleed that they bleed from the same place where they pee so very small small things and once you have this discussions uh, the actual education starts is what i feel so okay. yeah and uh, once they have known about all the choices then they can weigh about uh, like what is good for them then they can weigh those options and then they can decide what is good for them yeah so i also wanted to share a personal experience so i have uh, worked as a researcher in a rural part of india myself and my work generally used to be uh, encompassing different aspects of adolescent empowerment so that includes health nutrition education child protection and uh, wash so with respect to mhn i remember i was in a village in uh, madhya pradesh this was a, a tribal district of madhya pradesh called jhabua 
and uh, so i was interviewing this girl there and the uh, land there was pretty arid almost like a desert it was bord- uh, bordering uh, with rajasthan so i remember i had this uh, long conversation a long in depth interview with this teenage girl and i was asking her about menstrual products and she told me she had access to disposable sanitary napkins because she uh, her house was right next to the anganwadi center and uh, from there she used to get it for free and then i asked her that so she was one of the lucky ones who was getting it for free like mm-hmm. that and then i asked her about how you dispose it and then first she was extremely reluctant in answering that question in any way at all like she would she just completely went silent and then after probing a little bit uh she told me that they generally just bury it uh, in the farms in the morning because they like you said there is no waste collection system in uh, rural parts of india so they have to manage it uh, there itself so either they burn it uh, which is probably something uh, which a young like teenager wouldn't want to do it would probably attract more attention so they just bury it in the farm and now that we know about you know plastic uh, lasting for 400 500 years before it breaks down you can imagine that that uh, pad or maybe if she uses around uh, 50 pads for say if she uses two pad in uh, every cycle and you have uh, 12 cycles so there'll be 48 uh, sorry 24 pads lying in the field at the end of the year and they will probably be there for 4 500 years so that was something that was really uh, thought provoking thought provoking for me because in the development sector we uh, took that statistic which came out a few years back that you know only 36% of women in india are using sanitary napkins so that automatically means that uh, the rest of the women are using unhygienic products so that was a percentage which was uh, thrown around everywhere everyone was talking about oh my god there's a lack of access to uh, a uh, hygienic uh, menstrual product but then uh, the cycle the entire life cycle didn't make sense to me especially once i uh, spoke to this girl i mean there is right, there right. is a big flaw in promoting uh, these disposable menstrual products which need to be thought out and our response yeah, yeah. to that we need to uh, change we need to stop seeing that as an alarming fact that uh, there's only this much percentage of uh, women who have access to sanitary napkins yes yes and um, actually what i also think is like uh, a lot of people like uh, they may not prefer a disposable pad they may prefer to use cloth like i have seen like even when i have conducted interviews with people like i have asked them like uh, what product you use so they will say like um, i use cloth and um, like when we ask them like okay then what you uh, like how do you manage when you're outside then they say oh then i use a pad so a lot of people use combination of products so i'm not yeah. very sure if this combination is been uh, addressed when uh, the survey was done this nfhs survey was done uh, and the recent survey that is coming up is is going to include cloth pads menstrual cups everything so i'm hoping that the numbers will be different now and it will be more comprehensive wow i didn't i didn't know about that that sounds really cool yeah even i heard it recently and i'm really looking forward to it yeah. true yeah but then again uh, there is that uh, issue about uh, cloth pads um, the cloth pads that people use uh, they are not necessarily leak proof right because if you keep it at home they don't have that uh, sometimes they don't have access to any type of plastic so they will just use a cloth and fold it and they will use it and that does lead to more leakages as opposed to a commercial product like this one here or you know there are multiple brands now that have different uh, uh, that are making different cloth pads and they have a leak proof layer at the back so mm-hmm. even though right, it's right. not washable it's leak proof mm-hmm. so it gives you that comfort and that convenience that a disposable pad right right you. yes so that yes is uh, something that needs to be promoted in uh, the rural parts of our country i think 
uh actually uh if if someone is using cloth i think there is no harm in they if they are using it uh i have seen like women are quite comfortable using cloth but the young girls they are uh, quite uh, scared of the stains and the shaming that could happen because of the stains so i think that is something which really stops them from trying cloth or reusable options i feel and um, uh, what happens with women is like their mothers have used so these women were also using and uh, until recently the disposable pads were very they became very popular and uh, uh, they have are been uh, like given freely to school girls or or through anganwadi so that has that is like i think that is something that happened in a decade or so not before that so um, so it's quite different for the young girls now and they really can't relate with their mothers is what i have seen so um, that is something and um, like for mothers they feel like it's okay we will change it in 6 7 hours that's okay we know it's going to leak but the girls uh, they find very reluctant because they are really scared of the stains and i think media also plays a bigger role in all this like uh, like the the ads show that uh, how cloth gets stained and it gets soaked easily and the the disposable pad stays for long so all these comparisons um, instead of like creating conversations actually uh, i think they are becoming very regressive and shaming happens through that that's so right shaming and when that, yeah i didn't think about the role of uh, media like how they compare like in all the ads for uh, disposable uh, products they would show one on one side there'll be a cloth and on the other side there'll be a disposable pad and they'll put blue liquid and then they'll show that it yeah yeah. yeah 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 you're right so and uh, you know as a cloth user so i have uh, i have been a cloth user uh till i think my first year of uh, bachelors so like as a 10 year old to i think like 19 year 18 19 year old i was using cloth so for these 8 years i have been using cloth and sometimes i have used pad only when like like as other women have done like using disposable pad only when you are outside so uh i have been doing that and for me uh, it was like a really uh offense that i took like i and a lot of girls uh, who used to use cloth like i know some of my close friends who are also watching it right now so we took offense like why they have to uh, shame one product to show other product better so that was our uh like and that is my stand for today also like uh, even as a like i know that disposable pad has lots of cons but uh, i really don't need to shame it to show that you know reusables are be- better than disposables like uh, this shaming really needs to stop i feel <laughs> yeah that's so right and i feel like i i was speaking about this with you earlier that i think i am also guilty of that somewhere that when i started using menstrual cups then i would just be pestering my friends that you have to try menstrual cups you have to try and uh, but then you know over time i've realized that everyone uh, takes their own time uh, to basically accept these products and to start using them but however it's really important that everyone is aware of their choices uh, without the right. stigma and without the shame uh, that's attached to it yes yeah. yes so uh, overall uh, i want to also ask you about including sustainable menstrual uh, products in school curriculums uh, right at the age of uh when girls are first uh, informed about periods so maybe in class 6 or 7 uh when uh in the government schools or when in any school or at any anganwadi center girls first hear about periods if at that point itself if we inform them about these leak proof uh sanitary napkins which also have these wings so they are a little more convenient in design to use so suppose we talk about these even if there's a picture of this then the girls can visualize that okay we can make something like this so uh, yeah, yeah. and you know 
informing them about uh, menstrual cups and informing them about like you said tampons even though they might not use it but just informing them about all the products and secondly informing them about hygienic uh, use of these products like right, how right. if this is not washed properly if this is not dried properly it can lead to problems so basically yeah, if you yeah. can that whole information in uh, menstrual health curriculums at a young age uh like what do you think your uh, uh, input would be about that how do you uh, think uh uh so uh, some actually i would say some comics have attempted to you know try to give this uh, array of options uh, so uh, i think we should really include this products and as you very well put it that Uh, how to use them in a hygienic manner whether it could be a disposable pad or it could be a reusable pad uh, how hygiene maintaining hygiene is important and uh, how to dispose them or how to or if it's a reusable product then how to care for it like how to maintain it so how to dry it well so i think all these points need to be included because uh, like especially in uh, rural or lower socio economic uh, uh classes you will see that the first product they are introduced to like at house i would say not school but the first product that they get to know like uh, if they are at home during the uh, during their first period they are introduced a cloth so it's very important uh, that they know that how to use it how to maintain it like how to wash it how to dry it so uh with with any menstrual product there comes a responsibility of maintaining it so um we need to make sure that uh, they are clear about all those like if they are using a cloth pad or a cup like they need to know how to use it wear it well so yeah that needs to be added and i think uh, like uh, a lot of curriculum like uh, like especially the ones like i have seen the government ones they still don't have the reusable uh, component added uh, because uh, they themselves are not very convinced about product they have their own apprehensions uh, the uh, the people uh, so i think that uh, because of that probably they are not included but uh, we really need to try that uh, all these products are included and uh, uh, they get to know about all these products and and then it's slowly like once it's introduced in a curriculum then it's slowly going to create access and so many other things are going to happen with it yeah that's right so and- yeah uh, can you uh, can you also throw some light on uh, what is lacking in the curriculums that are present today like uh, you were telling me about this earlier that there are there is no uniformity uh, with respect to menstrual health curriculums like you have worked yeah, in yeah. Uh, multiple states other than chatisgarh as well so can you tell us a little bit about what type of uh, information is currently there in the curriculum and what uh, what can be added to that other than uh, sustainable menstrual products so uh, firstly i personally feel is like um, they all have uh, included the hygiene part of uh, using a disposable product then how to like wrap it and throw it so they talk about it uh, gen- this is like the general theme which you see in all the curriculums and uh, then um, some of them make an attempt to talk in detail about growing up puberty and what all changes happen in your body and uh, like what is abnormal fl- discharge and what is uh, normal discharge like what your what is the color of blood you should expect and some other things so some people have made such and uh, there are some who uh, like uh, i would speak like uh, the comprehensive one i have seen are ma- mostly made by ngos uh like they are really comprehensive ones but um, but the government curriculums they generally like um, there are many gaps which uh, they could uh, think of like they could have a team of experts and they should really i feel uh, needs updation because uh, one thing like we shouldn't really limit it to just disposable products we need to address issue of uh, using a cloth and also reusable pro- other reusable products like cup and cloth pads so that people know about all these products that's one thing then uh, as you mentioned that there is no uh, which i have seen that there is no uniformity in the curriculum 
there should be um you know some basic points that all curriculum should cover i personally feel like growing up puberty then uh, what to expect during periods like and uh, uh, some home remedies also and when to see a doctor so all these different things need to be addressed uh, so recently i uh, recently i mean uh, <laughs> it's a wrong word to say recently because i uh, like in the beginning of this year when i visited chatisgarh uh i was i visited several schools then for uh, understanding this curriculum and also the uh, to conduct awareness sessions so there is already one uh, curriculum that is in place and that has been piloted in some schools um so it's part of a life skill uh, education uh, that has been given in some schools of chatisgarh so i got to know that uh, they have already included menstrual health in that but the other part of uh, it is like uh, and they have really listed some good activities in that like um, making drawing about your own body understanding how it looks like uh, having discussions with teacher on different topics related to menstrual health and uh, and then there were uh, several like uh, hands on activities which they had included uh, like drawing some art related to it and um, so things like that but i really wish that they also added how to make a cloth pad of your own like because cloth is generally available at home and uh, if like if you find a cotton cloth like it could be a kurta or something so that is like a really cool activity they could include in the life skills training i personally feel like stitching is really basic thing which we all should learn so if we just add one more activity to it like that would be really great i feel so uh, that could be one thing and uh, and i also feel like there is really thin line between uh, menstrual health education and um, sexual and reproductive health education so um, so maybe like we can include some more topics from sexual health education also uh, but again like uh, you have to like uh, Uh, once that curriculum is made the teachers have to be trained so that they can talk openly about it like sometimes the curriculums are so great so great sometimes but uh, the teachers are not confident because they don't know how to start how to break the ice because no one has spoken to them also about it before like they have just attended one training that's it and uh, they have not really tried to talk about it to someone so uh, yeah it's like multi layered thing when we discuss curriculum personally i feel yeah that's right and uh, one thing i want to ask you that like you said that some of the teachers are also never uh, have these conversations and that's why they are uncomfortable to uh, take this up and uh, i actually i remember the first time i got in touch with you well was when i had a really bad experience with a male teacher in a reputed uh, college of the university yeah yeah i had i i was at this stall and we uh, were promoting menstrual cups and he said something really strange that you know what is the point of this uh, menstrual cup i am trying to replace men with menstrual cup and i was just so not prepared to answer that uh, question and then i contacted you that you know, what should i do is this is harassment should i report it yeah yeah side and my my instinct aside how how has your experience been with uh, male educators in schools like if we introduce these in curriculums certainly they would be uh, conducted by women but uh, there also has to be a sense of acceptance and uh, involvement of the male teachers and education of the male teachers as well uh yeah so the incident you shared actually some years ago i think 4 5 years ago a woman had asked me like you know my vagina belongs to my husband and nothing else can go it inside it like cup or a tampon nothing else can go inside it because vagina is not meant for that and uh, she had like really screamed when i was explaining it's like oh no it's not for uh, anyone else it's only for my husband and i was like okay okay fine so <laughs> it was hilarious then but um, but yeah things like that happen and uh, <laughs> you won't believe oh uh, i think just past two years i would say uh, things have been different for me till then like till to the, from 2013 to 
with all the male teachers i have interacted with i had to approach them saying that i have to uh, conduct a session on general hygiene or health and blah blah i had to really use such broad words to talk uh, so and mutually we knew that what i am going to talk about but i had to use these words because they were not comfortable and sometimes they were really uncomfortable uh, when i mentioned that i want to talk about menstrual health because some of them like not just uh, male teachers like female teachers also they were like you are teaching nasty things to children and uh, things like that it used i used to really hear these comments from school teachers uh, like the principal and all but uh, i think padman though it talks about disposable products but it really started the conversation i feel like uh, now people are so open like you just go, approach a school and they're like yeah cool you can come on blah uh, this this date and you can conduct a session it's become so easy now i like uh, you won't believe uh, so i was telling you like i went to chatisgarh in february uh there was in the, in two schools there were uh, male principals and there i to- told them so no okay i will start with the beginning so everywhere uh, i approached in the education department there were all male education officers there was not a single female and I, when i uh, was speaking about this i like many years ago when i knew that man that officer he was really uncomfortable but now into the, in 2020 i found him giving me you know clearance like okay go to this 10 schools go to this 50 schools and i was really surprised to see that like they are really supporting me and also like i knew them personally for so many years so that also made a difference but uh, i got this really like quick permissions but one more thing like in two schools where there were male principals uh so one of them really apologized to me that uh, i don't have a time i don't have time right now i have to attend some meeting at uh, district headquarter uh, but i would have really loved to stay back and attend your session i was like what are you really serious i really wanted to ask him that but people surprise you like that is happening and uh, but but again like in the same school the female teachers were not comfortable attending my session so uh, this is the contradiction i saw in the same place but i think change is going to happen and uh, like when i have done sessions in cafes and all i have seen men getting interested and trying to understand what their girlfriend or their uh, wife must be feeling in those four five days like they are really make, making an attempt to understand that so i think uh, the change is slow but that is happening yeah so we should not stop trying <laughs> yeah that's right definitely you shouldn't stop trying i mean these are just hiccups that uh, come on the way yeah yeah mm-hmm. yeah and consistent efforts are really needed like the same district i'm talking about like this was not the same when i was when i started working in 2013 and when i met them in 2020 i was like yeah like they just gave me a prashad like that was a permission letter with uh, you know you can go to this 20 schools i was like what is this even real is this the same person i'm talking to who didn't give me clearance many years ago so <laughs> that is thing that is happening and um, yeah we really need to be consistent in our efforts is what i have seen and um, and yeah people change like even women also like uh, the teachers whom i worked with in 13 14 now they will be though they have not really started using reusable products over these years but they are so comfortable talking about this topic like even if, even when i left that organization so many years ago they continued working with the children on the same topic like mm. so yeah that is the thing i feel like um, that should be uh, like they should understand the importance and they should uh take the accountability and do it themselves so then only that message can really go ahead like uh, not just the curriculum but the kind of delivery and uh, the kind of motivation they get because uh, the time i spent with these teachers i i understood that they themselves were so uncomfortable they had their own hiccups and they were like when i conducted my first session in 2013 i remember uh, the teachers were यू नो मैडम हमें समझ में नहीं आ रहा आप क्या बात कर रहे हो मतलब हमको समझ में आ रहा है कि आप महावारी के बारे में आप पीरियड्स के बारे में बात कर रहे हैं पर ये जो आप बाकी की बात कर रहे हैं ना कुछ समझ में नहीं आ रहा 
i will just translate this for uh, other viewers so the teacher said that okay i'm understanding that you are talking about menstruation but i'm really not getting what you want to do on this topic and what you are really speaking about it so but the same teacher after i met him met her in 2018 she continued working in the same place and now she has been transferred to some other school the same teacher she has been working on the topic wherever she went so yeah that happens like because they took accountability of that and they really attended my session every time like i did a couple of se series of sessions and the teachers were like we don't know we want to understand what you are speaking so <laughs> uh, so i think that is the comfortable space that we really need to create and uh, then the teachers can do it themselves so uh, one thing i'd like to ask you uh, is that um, since the campaign that we have launched uh, it's going to be focused on curriculum change uh, in uh, government school of delhi so i wanted to ask you uh, like uh, the experience that you have shared that uh, you are going or an ngo has developed a curriculum and they are planning to implement it and it was piloted and you know all of that but uh, what are the challenges uh, that you think uh, the campaign can face or you know like in delhi if the government approves or uh, supports our campaign and they include uh, information on sustainable menstrual products in the curriculum what are the challenges and what are the areas on which uh, they will need to work on so that uh, the teachers are able to deliver uh, the curriculum themselves maybe with support okay. of some training from an ngo or uh, yeah but eventually the teachers have to uh, be the ones who conduct the sessions yes uh, so first thing i think uh, what uh, since our both campaigns are quite similar i think first mm -hmm. is checking if the curriculum is comprehensive or not so if it's not comprehensive then just addressing those gaps and filling those gaps with the help of uh, like uh, you can address the government like you know you choose experts and you fill those gaps or i can give like we can give you suggestions and the experts can fill the gaps so uh, they can very well take help of unicef or mhai or anyone they they want to take so filling those gaps first and then having a like a training uh, for teachers like how to address these topics with the students so that is one thing and as you said once the training is done actually the hand holding is something that is very much needed so it could be an ngo that could uh, take the um, uh, take that responsibility of hand holding this uh, couple of teachers like uh, i think that could be done uh, even in chatisgarh we are doing like uh, we are planning that uh, it will be us who will be doing the hand holding uh, like training i don't know if uh, government wants us to do the training or not it still needs to be sorted out but uh, the hand holding part we are really ready to offer that help uh, to the government because we are building a team now in chatisgarh so um, so that hand holding for 6 uh, months or 1 year is really needed i personally feel and uh, and in chatisgarh we are also like uh, uh, pitching for one more thing like uh, like for one district only we are uh, pitching right now we are also saying that uh, like this is like really small part of the campaign but like every new teacher comes in the uh, in the system i think she should be uh, whenever she gets training about 10 other things that a teacher should uh, learn or know uh, she should also learn have a training on this topic so this we are pitching for this part also so um, i think we should really uh, work on that and uh, there are going to be hiccups from government like uh, uh, you know what happens is uh, when we started talking about this campaign in uh, not just uh, our district but in other districts also uh, we got to hear that uh, uh, like uh, the disposable pads are given and um, some discussion on hygiene is done so why do we need such campaign in the first place so we got this what to hear this but actually um, then we need to uh, step back and tell them like okay yeah this work is happening but do you know consistent efforts are ne needed new children are going to come every year like not every year exactly but like new new child is going to be like attaining menarche so uh, we have to be prepared for it and like one session is not going to solve the issue so these conversations need to go uh, like 
even when the curriculum is there but like these conversations need to be going and uh, yeah. with government uh, with government what happens is uh, they are always short of staff is what i have seen like and especially on the good projects so uh, uh, a startup like you or or an ngo anything i think their help is uh, really appreciated by them like uh, there are lot of government uh, like departments and even officials i know they will be like okay i'll give you x amount and you continue the project so that really uh, helps like you can just involve some government officials in that or some teachers whoever you are targeting and you continue the hand holding you empower them so that really like um, then they really feel happy that there is someone to support and yeah. initial support is much more needed like in the beginning first i would say uh, so once your curriculum is in place uh, you have done the curriculum it's like perfect now and now you are ready to implement so the first i would say one year or two year that is when the uh, help is really crucial then after 4 yeah. 5 years or so when uh, you know new products have come in the market or there is some new change that has happened in the society so now like pandemic is new thing so so now the updation will be needed so if it is a 5 year old curriculum so like after pandemic there needs to be some updation in the curriculum so uh, th- there again you can pitch like uh, like you or anyone like who wants to work on that topic then i think that needs to be done another thing i think that you uh, raised in your points which i would like i would request you to elaborate on is like even in delhi the percentage of girls who are using uh, disposable pads is very high which like we discussed earlier is considered to be a great thing because uh, that is directly understood as people having access to hygienic menstrual products so i understand that's a good thing it's a very good thing and it's something that the delhi government has worked hard on to reach so that is certainly commendable now in between this if we start talking about cloth pads definitely uh, the government will have some backlash or some confusion that why would we do that when we already are distributing uh, you know good quality uh, disposable products so you know before we close this we're running short of time there's something i wanted to ask you because i see this as a question that will be raised to us in the future i mean uh, like uh, if you can maybe uh, talk about the dioxins and the amount of plastic and you know the actual impact on health that uh, disposable sanitary uh, pads posed uh so yeah so um when you are talking about uh, i'm just referring to the earlier conversation we had like about informed choice so i think when we push for informed choice uh it just takes away the pressure of uh, talking about just one product then you can say that uh, okay you are already giving disposable product well and good you are working on it but uh, these products uh, have these disadvantages like uh, because it's bleached it's it looks white we think it's clean but actually it has dioxins and uh, dioxins are related to uh, issues related to reproductive health they are endocrine disruptors when you give such data to them uh, they may be taken aback that is one thing and they may not agree to it that is what we have seen also but when we tell them like uh, let's give a basket of choices like let's give reusable also let's give disposable also when we say this uh, i think they mellow down a bit like that is what i have seen like okay you give disposable product but can you also include reusable product can we have a survey or can we have a pilot of it like how many people are interested in talking about it so uh, maybe that you can include and uh, and you can also do a survey like creating evidences about it like taking uh, like it could be a survey it could be in the form of videos if you could use that like uh, what girls use and what they want to use so uh, even we are trying to build those evidence like what girls actually use and whether they are willing to use uh, reusable products in the future so uh, those evidence building is really needed i feel so then they feel ki okay this is coming from the field this is not what we have cooked up so that also creates a difference i feel and uh, another for uh, like this is a suggestion just for your campaign 
uh, what we are also doing is like taking help of some someone who is already working on this topic uh, that's a big name in that uh, in that industry or they know the officials very well so take help of those to address your issues address whatever campaign you are doing because then what happens is if that person is convinced this influential person xyz whoever it is then that person make sure that samne wala listens to you and they give you time so that really makes a difference so this uh, you are going to have differences we have had this differences or i still have this differences with government i tell them like oh, it's good you are doing on disposable but you also need to talk about other options available in market so now slowly they are like okay okay we will look into it now the wordings are changing after uh, such long time <laughs> yeah but uh, yeah and you can talk uh, like uh, and you can evidence is something like that is something uh, that is going to help you a lot like even mm-hmm. if you get like 10 girls who are ready to talk about it um mm-hmm. have their survey or have videos of them whatever so use that evidence yeah so that is actually part of our campaign strategy uh, since uh, like you know this campaign is associated with uh, youth ki awaaz network so we had uh, prepared this campaign st- uh, strategy where we will uh, include uh, 10 case studies of girls uh, and we will ask them about uh, their um, interest and their willingness of using uh, reusable options um, yeah yeah so yeah so since we are approaching the save it as well for people who would like to watch this uh, later on uh, i just wanted to ask you if there's anything uh, you would like to add uh, before we end or any other su- uh, suggestions for uh, the petition that we are about to start on including sustainable menstruation in school curriculums i personally uh, so i am also part of several networks so i would like to share this petition with several people so i am ready to share your petition with different people uh, that's one thing uh, like bleed red go green and uh, will always be supporting this campaign mm-hmm. and another thing is that uh, about uh, the curriculum you are looking for um if you uh, i think you should also approach uh, mhai and these people if you haven't already so um, you can get some inputs from them also and uh, you will get a good push because they have they have been into the wash sector for some time so they know like right people to approach and who could probably work so maybe you can take their help also uh, i'll i'll see if i can connect you with them and um, that'll be really great yeah. yeah yeah i'll just check if i have the email id i think i have phone number of someone who, who is part of mhi so i think uh, you should uh, take it there and um, and yeah um, so our uh, live is going to be saved and uh, you all are welcome to share your um, opinions about what we just discussed and if you have any ideas about her campaign or my campaign you think like this is this strategy could work we are happy to listen because this is all what you are doing is trial and error to make government listen uh, about different perspectives about menstrual products so yeah <laughs> thank you so much for your support and yeah i'd like to I'd like to share this with our audience as well that uh, like Rajasi said that creating evidence is really important even Radhika pointed it out in the comments even she is working on uh, creating awareness around menstruation and ne so uh, as part of uh, our uh, effort to create awareness and evidence around this we would really uh, appreciate if you can share your experiences about uh, your uh, using of sustainable menstrual products whether it's cloth pads or uh uh menstrual cups we would certainly like to document those and along with our petition we would like to share it uh with the government representatives that we approach and uh, secondly if you have any experiences that you'd like to share about you know whether you had if you had got this information at an earlier age then what difference would that have made in your life if there's anything like that that you'd like to share like i always share my personal experience 
that when I was younger, I was really scared about, you know, staining my school uniforms and things like that. And my period wasn't always very regular. It's not initially, it's not an exactly 30 day cycle that, you know, if it comes on the first, the next month also will come on the first. So initially when we're younger, we're so scared about staining and the whole shame and stigma around it if you stain your skirt. So... Uh, at that point in time, I used to sometimes end up wearing my uh, disposable sanitary napkins for maybe 10 days in a month, which was totally not required. However, even in that case, if I had access to something like a cloth pad, which I could use for at least five days in that month, then my overall period would have been far more comfortable. So that's my experience. And I would definitely uh, encourage anyone else to share their experience or their thoughts on uh, sustainable menstruation if you had if you've used it or uh, about sustainable menstruation being included in school curriculums please do share those with us and we would love to use that as the evidence that uh, we share with the government when we approach them later this year yeah yeah and i hope this nfhs data also comes so that we have more number of people uh, using reusable so that uh, what people say is like only 1% are using but that's not actually the case so yeah. i hope that that data also comes and that you can quote in your campaign yeah definitely okay. yeah Thank you so much, Rajasi, for joining us. This is really special since it's the first live that we are doing in the series uh, under the campaign. And we will be coming up with more conversations on sustainable menstruation. So stay tuned. And yeah, thank you once again. It means a lot. Thank you and all the best for your campaign. And yeah, we will keep talking about our campaigns. Uh, yeah, on Definitely. WhatsApp or calls, whatever. <laughs> Definitely. Okay Thank then. You. Bye. Have a nice evening. Yeah. Bye bye. Thank you.